The Dust Bowl of the 1930s taught landowners the importance of being good stewards of the land. It launched the creation of conservation districts across the state to ensure land is farmed properly and not left exposed to drought or erosion. Conservation districts are working to preserve grasslands and pastures and to also save endangered species like the lesser prairie chicken in western Oklahoma. Every spring, the lesser prairie chickens gather in communal mating grounds known as leks. The males try to impress the females with ritual dances and fights. The leks are scattered across wide expanses of prairie in western Oklahoma and parts of Colorado, Kansas, Texas, and New Mexico. A hundred years ago, it was believed there were millions of lesser prairie chickens throughout the region. Ken Collins is a biologist for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. He says it's a much different picture today. Recently, the, the five states partnered with the Western Association of Fish and Wildlife Agencies to conduct an aerial survey of prairie chickens across, lesser prairie chickens across their range. And based on that survey methodology and the results of those surveys, there's an estimated 37,000 lesser prairie chickens in all five states currently. Lesser prairie chickens used to thrive on this grassland just outside of Woodward. The land has been owned by the Ferguson family for four generations. Actually, I was born just before the Dust Bowl. So when I was growing up, there was still a certain amount of hunting going on, but it was interspersed with the very dry periods when it was, it was tough for for all kinds of animals. Mead Ferguson heard stories from his father and grandfather about the abundant wildlife on their land before the Dust Bowl. Using this as an example, this would have been covered with the prairie chicken and bob white. People would be coming out and hunting all during the winter. It was really a wildlife type of paradise. Just before the Dust Bowl happened, uh, the history of this part of the state is we were going into a war and uh, a lot of ground that was never broken out before uh, was put into production. And so wildlife actually increased during that period of time uh, because there was a, a vast amount of food source. Sarah Pope is the program's director for the Oklahoma Association of Conservation Districts. She says when the Dust Bowl wiped out vegetation, it left nothing for wildlife to survive on. Conservation practices after the Dust Bowl renewed the farmland and brought back wildlife. The lesser prairie chicken was doing well until the 1970s. Certainly some of the historical information we have from the 1970s and before show that we could have as many as 20, 30, maybe even 40 males alone visiting a single lek. Uh, today in Oklahoma, most of the numbers indicate that there are maybe six to fewer birds uh, per lek. Today, the lesser prairie chickens don't have the habitats they need to survive on. It's estimated that a single lek needs 25,000 acres of unbroken grassland to maintain a viable population. And now it's been broken up by highways, by power lines, uh, or they've been threatened more by wind power. Um, then, then the eastern red cedar came in, and they've just taken up a lot of the, ha the habitat that these ground nesting species like the lesser prairie chicken needs. John Aldridge heads up a program at the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service that helps landowners restore wildlife habitat on their property. One big effort is getting rid of red cedar, which is sucking water from farm and rangelands. Red cedar also inhibits the nesting of lesser prairie chickens, which don't like anything vertical in the landscape. What we encourage from our angle, we try to go in and remove it, mechanically remove it, and it's stacked, and then the landowner will come in and burn it. That's really the best way to do it. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service also provides grass planters called grass drills for use by landowners. The drills are no-till, which means they don't disturb the soil as grass is planted. The drills can be borrowed from certain conservation districts to help landowners restore native grass. We've taken all of our native grasses and we come back with warm season grasses like fescue and, and uh, Bermuda, and that's almost like concrete to wildlife, especially ground nesting birds. Mead Ferguson has worked with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and the USDA's Natural Resources Conservation Service to restore his property by replenishing native grasses and eliminating red cedar. We're out there providing technical assistance to landowners, giving them advice on how to improve their places. And if they so adopt 
some of the practices that can improve them. There's avenues for cost assistance provided as well. It involved a certain amount of pasture control, moving the cattle back and forth so the grass never got too short uh, to operate for cover. And this involved us having to put in more water to be able to do that. The lesser prairie chickens haven't returned to Ferguson's land, but he's glad he tried. I think the quail will come back, but I'm not sure about the, the prairie chicken. The lesser prairie chicken in Oklahoma was declared a candidate species in 1998. That designation means it is in line to be added to the list of endangered species. A proposal to list it as an endangered species is being written and will be submitted to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service this month. Before the service makes a decision, a one-year review will take place, which will include input from the public and scientific communities. An endangered species designation will lead to increased measures to protect the lesser prairie chicken and its habitat.